let's get started. Okay. So it's better to, I mean, not for the kid. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming tonight. Um, we're already in open session because uh, we started with a closed session. But just for formalities, let's uh, do a roll call. Mike? Yes. Here. Rodriguez? Here. Sherby? Here. Westham? Here. Fletcher? Here. Cervantes? Here. Okay. Um, so this is a very please stand for a moment of silence and a pleasure of allegiance. That's okay. It's, uh, I like to keep things moving on. Um, as we are in the, the next point, the recognition of public comments, I have just one uh, from Angie Olson, and she wants to speak about COVID school guidelines. Um, let's see, when the board president so directs, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Just go ahead, go to the podium. Yep, go to the podium. Uh, person should proceed to the platform or podium, give their name, and begin their statements. Persons are asked to refrain from making any personal comments regarding any individuals. And the board president reserves the right to limit the presentation to five minutes. Thank you for the comments. My name is Angie Olson, and I'm here to be a voice for my children, as well as I'm being a voice for the students that I have grown to love dearly for the last 12 years of teaching. I'm standing here before all of you that we, the parents, voted to be in those seats to address the new school guidelines that were issued, and to ask that our district allow that masks to be optional or up to the point of discretion this fall. For the past three months now, when, so it'll be three months when the school's kids start school, our children have been running around playing with other children, maskless, doing sports activities, and even going on vacations without a mask. During the school year, many of our students were traveling across state lines to play ball tournaments without a mask. And in your handout, I included a map of schools in other states that are going maskless now, so COVID must not pass state lines. I often heard from my students, and even my own kids, how hard it was to focus wearing masks. It gave him a headache. It caused an upset stomach. It was even really hard to breathe. One day, my son came home to me and said, Mom, when I raised my hand and asked my teacher to come over for a question, the teacher wouldn't come to me because she was afraid of me. My six-year-old asked me the other, or asked me when he said, Mommy, I hate that I can't see my teacher's face. I don't even know if she's happy or if she's even angry at me. In the beginning, we didn't know very much about the virus. But the more that this has gone on, the more we've learned and the more studies that have came out saying that it's not at risk for the kids. The CDC has even said that schooling is not a place of transmission. I know recently the State Board of Education released, and I quote, because here's the letter that she just released, saying that we are very happy to announce that the Illinois Department of Public Health has fully adapted the guidance of school issued by the CDC. Also, she goes on to say in the letter that she knows that all schools may not be able to implement all of the health strategies, and that's okay. When you look at the CDC guidelines, which I've also printed off here, they go on to say that these things are recommended, not required. They also go on to say that since schools typically serve the surrounding communities, decisions should be made based on the school population, the families, as well as the community that they serve. However, if school administrators decide to remove any of the prevention strategies for school based on local conditions, they should remove them one at a time and put it in language and literature to communicate with others. I'm sorry, I'm paraphrasing so that I don't run out of time. Last year was very hard for everybody, but especially for the kids. 
If we go on and look, so much data has shown how these restrictions have affected these kids. Anxiety, depression, and it just needs to stop. The CDC said mental illness has increased by 31%. They reported that suicide is the second leading cause of death in kids ages 10 to 34. And even Robert Redford, the CDC director, went on to state that now they're seeing far more suicides than death from COVID. So I also handed out in your handout, I put a couple of like studies that they're showing because ironically in May of 2020, the CDC released a scientific study saying that they found no significant reduction in influenza type illnesses with the use of a face mask. And in your handout, you can see I gave you um, this study, which is what parents in Florida sent off and it's their kids face mask, more than for a half a day of school and 83% were contaminated. And they talked about what they had in them. They had pneumonia, tuberculosis, staph infections, all sorts of stuff on the inside of the dirty mask. The other one that I put in there is a study that was just recently released that kids are actually breathing in carbon dioxide and the blood, carbon dioxide levels in their blood is very high and it's at risk when they wear a mask to that point amount of time. Homeschooling quadrupled in the United States last year. Private school's enrollment has nearly doubled because you are moving. In Galesburg, we came so far, and I, and I just moved here six years ago, but you guys focus so much on social emotional well-being. We've been focusing on a sense of equality and a sense of belonging. And right now, kids feel that they're dangerous and that everyone's afraid of them, and school shouldn't be that way. It's supposed to be nurturing an environment, and a kid should be nurturing environment, and kids should feel loved and cared for, not afraid of. One last thing that I want to point out is that no one should ever be pressured or punished or treated differently because they chose not to get a vaccine. For whatever reason, medical, religious, or due to those parents wanting to wait for full FDA approval, it shouldn't matter. No one should be looked at or treated differently. More scientific studies are constantly coming out of the, of the side effects. And I put in the WHERE's data, I, the website's there because it's 1,500 pages long, but there's 40, 441,000 adverse reactions and 2,200 myocarditis reactions down in kids in ages 12 to 24. So, which gives parents of many reasons to question. So many districts in Illinois have already voted to make masks optional. And they have a few, Dunlap, Lamont, Vandalia, Redville, Warsaw, Waterloo, Highland, Elmwood. And so I'm standing here before you asking you guys to, the board, to allow it to be part of parent decision, the people who take care of them, and allow that mass be optional with all four of us. Thank you. Moving on to uh, presentations to the board. Do we have one? No. Okay. Um, and moving on further, we have the approval of the consent agenda. And the motion to make. So moved. Second. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Allison? Allen? Yes. Phelps? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Shirley? Aye. Bestan? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is focus area one, relevant skills that lead to employability. Um, first up is the curriculum report, which I'm going to take with that. Yeah, so uh, we did put in uh, an ELL, ELL report from Scott Rasso, the director. Um, so it's in your packet. You saw that it was quite lengthy. I appreciate Mr. Rasso's uh, thoroughness on that. Um, but uh, Mrs. Springer will be back uh, in August. She's finishing up her vacation. So she'll be back in August and give you a, a verbal report. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or comments concerning Mr. Rasso's report? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the special education report. Good evening. The, the only thing I'd like to focus on tonight is the special ed policies and procedures 
They are 80, 80 pages long, so we didn't put them in the board packet, but we did put the link for you to go to those. The major changes that took place from last year when we did a look at them is in the areas of IEP programs. Basically, some of the lodge legislative changes that took place next year where parents have a right to review the records, they have a right to request an interpreter, and they have a right to request copies of service logs. Also, in the area of procedural safeguards, where all, all materials need to be sent to the parents in hand three days prior to the meeting, and some behavior uh, is requirements, as well as addressing assistive techniques. So those were really the only updates, and those were based on legislative changes that had happened through the year. So just getting caught up with them. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Okay, moving on to uh, any questions, Mark? No, I know you've got to do it. Okay. I'm doing pictures. All right. Is doing the the next up, focus area two, uh, facilities and assistance still acquisition, oh. uh, the building and grounds committee report. Well, let's look at some pictures here of the <coughs> Spanish or 712 facility. Uh, we'll get some more we'll discussion later on about how much we're on track and those areas we're not on track. Uh, we have here, oh, this is the home ec classroom. Or not, it's not called home. Uh, food science classes. Food science classes. With the hoods above the stoves, the cabinetry, it's uh, it's really it's really nice. Uh, as you see the ceiling has all the lights in it, it has the, the whole building, as you may remember, has water suppressing suppression throughout. And there's the little water coming down. So this room is in addition to in the cabinets finishing a floor, the ceiling is in money in the classrooms. So you'll probably see that in some later pictures. So these two are of the food science classroom. Yes. This is the front part, there's a larger area for a presentation. So and we see this is really nice. I like the hallways. If you see all the classrooms have the two by four uh, ceiling tile. In the hallway, we're using the smaller tile, and it's at an angle, so it has some visual interest in the hallway. These halls have all been painted already, uh, and, the, <coughs> and the lights in the hallway are these LED pieces that go between the ceiling tiles on the angle, so it'll look really sharp when it finishes. Okay. Oh, we're out to the old area vocational center, which we're not looking to occupy next fall, except for the art rooms, correct? But many of the rooms that will be opening later on have already been walled in. We remember that our walkthrough pictures, we have classrooms at either end, and there's a series of special ed classrooms down the middle, smaller spaces. And here we see, oh, I touched the screen. I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> Thank you for fixing the Allison. And the rooms will have light because we do, again, capturing light from the, the ceiling in this area. So there's a corner light piece as well as a large doorway in each classroom to capture light. Okay, okay next one. Nice. Cool. Oh, this is great. <laughs> this is the front hallway. We get upstairs, and here's the seven, eight com eating area. Oh, <laughs> stand back farther. Stand back farther. Put your hands in your pocket. Yeah. So the windows have all been framed in already. They'll get glass eventually, and interior trim. But all the wall board is up. This is the area that's the hallway behind what used to be the entrance to the balcony. Okay? That's all the functional space in the remodeled space. It's a dead space. And now when we see here the that commons area, the floor's all been poured, so it awaits tile at some point in its life. 
and it needs a, a wall as they go up here, separating it from the downstairs commons, which is here, which is the eating area <coughs> for our older students. Which you know, nice, doesn't it? <laughs> well, this side we decided against the window. No, the windows here don't exist, but the other walls facing south are new doorways and windows. So you have this huge amount of light flooding the space. The build-out framing here, that's the entrance into the performing arts center. Uh, so that's you know, really nice. Stay on the other side, and we'll hopefully have some pictures of that. So why don't we go on? Okay, that's from the that lower level. This used to be the back of the auditorium, which is now the eating commons for the older students, and hopefully a common area when we use the performing arts center on the other side of that entrance. Uh, and here we saw an area where the wall board was all finished. This isn't. And let's get into it. And remember, I mentioned those windows on the south that eventually would be filling in these two holes here, as well as the doorway. They'll lead out to our new band and chorus rooms, which haven't been begun yet. Um, once again, this is at the ground level of the commons. This is facing these door closed doorways with the entrance into the servery. The new servery, which was ready for use this year, which we never got a chance to use, but will be used hopefully come September. I think it's really nice. And once again, there'll be a wall going up here, separating the upper commons from the younger students and the older one down below. Are you getting this right there? Mm -hmm. This is the secondary center in the office area? The second floor. Second the second floor, all right. I saw these pictures before, and it was, this floor wasn't here last week when I went through. That would be the seventh and eighth grade offices. Eventually. The most students right there. So these rooms, you see, not only to look like the only thing they're missing is some doors and glasswork and the finish of the counter. It's pretty exciting. Ceilings are in, lights are in. Okay. This is the main entrance. The greeting people are up here, security's back here, and then the area just to the east of it, and you can see that in the last picture, is the uh, health center area, the nurses area. Right? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, and what am I looking at? Here? That's a solid surface bench in the three, in the main office. It'll look better when we open. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're we're into the area. Oh guys, we need to talk about doing this. Yeah, this work room first. Work room, nurses room, nurses room, room and, the and the bathroom. Pretty nice. The, set, the surf, surfaces are on, the cabinets are in, ceilings are finished and set for tiles to pop in. Some are very nice. Okay. okay, this is the, if you've gone down Fremont Street, the entrance outside will be uh, 1974 edition for the library is. That was all torn out and new steps and ramping was put in. And that'll be our younger student entrance. It'll be signage, which we talked about for many time hours <laughs> two, three meetings ago here. But to tie in as an entrance, the steelwork has gone in outside. So at a smaller level, mirrors what we see at the main entrance to the high school. So they have the angled steel glasswork. This will not be walled in. We'll have that one. Okay. Oh, bye bye mobile classrooms. And here, here's the former area vocational center, which is, you've seen, you saw some pictures of the interior of that not so long ago. And here we see, used to be that drive that went all the way through. Well, that drive doesn't go through anymore. We have the foundation has been poured for the addition to the 1012 wing of the building. 
yeah, 10, 12 years ago. So we don't foresee this being finished for occupancy until a year from this part. But uh, we complete this area really nicely. In addition here, you may notice in the old heating plant have these high chimneys. And they're out there because we're not heating, we're going to a hot water system instead of a boiler system. Uh, the pad behind there has been laid, and that's where these cooling, for the air conditioning will go on top of that. Right, is that right, Lee? I thought they were supposed to go out last week. <laughs> but we're back. Did I touch that? Yes. 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 That's the last one I bet, though, isn't it? Yes. Okay. All right. Is that okay about the end? Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Member Ryan. Uh, next, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Lee Marbach to step up for the personal construction and talk to us about the, our schedule ahead. Thank you. So, uh, you saw a lot of the progress made, and uh, Lori mentioned that some areas are on schedule, some areas are challenging. So, uh, kind of what I'm going to go over today is kind of let you know the information I know uh, based on the data as of today. We hope to know more next week. We have buildings in front of community meeting and things change daily or weekly. And we're pushing to get more uh, uh, finite dates of deliveries and stuff. Uh, so, right now, kind of our main drivers of delayed items. Wait, you know, hold on one second. I'm just looking at it. They can change my name. This is preliminary. So nothing that we say here is this is set in stone, okay? We just got some updated information today we don't like, and we're trying to change that information. So whatever you print or put on the radio, understand none of it's final. Got it? Got it? I got it. Right. <laughs> so the radio has the truth. What? I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, what we know today, as I said, everything changes daily. So um, right now our, our biggest challenges are uh, revolve around flooring, floor covering, um, electrical switch gear, uh, marker boards, attack boards, and lockers. So that's kind of our main items right now that are in, in flux, and I can expand on each one of those. Yes. Question on lockers. <laughs> so, two meetings ago, we force majeure come on the lockers, and we had to pay another $65,000 for the lockers. Yes. To my understanding, that didn't change the timeline for delivery. I voted to pay them more, which I didn't reluctantly did, and now I'm being told I won't potentially have until September 30. I throw the flag and say BS. So, so where are we as a board, as a community, we got took a, taken advantage of, I feel, two months ago. Now I'm being taken advantage on delivery. What are my options to these folks to say, no, this is unacceptable? Great question. Um, I'd have to look into further options. I've had conversations directly with the manufacturer. I've gone past our subcontractor. We've had contracts or conversations with them. They are working to pull this up in their schedule. Um, and what they're telling us right now is they still do not have the steel for our order. Yeah, so they're waiting for oil stock for our, for our, so this is one of the larger orders in queue, and so as soon as that is still there, they try to bring us up, but they can't do this on a given date. So right now, the estimated delivery dates, or ship dates, are middle of September for starting that, except September 15th and September 30th for the ship dates for lockers. So, so, this is the county, is that the date that uh, November, yeah. November. Yeah, order was placed. So we didn't get in line in November. So orders were placed in December. It went through a shop grinds, and then we got final approval of our, you know, the layout and everything in April. And in what June, I think is when the force majeure came up. But they're canceling all the contracts and less people. And this wasn't just our school district. This was we talked to other block vendors and others. It was across the board industry wide. And and as you'll see, there's a common thread that we're talking about. The items delayed have to do with stuff. Overseas. I don't know if the coil stock from these lockers came from China. I'm not sure. I don't have any information. I know that a lot of coil stock is not made here in the U.S. anymore. Um, so I don't know what's driving the material delays, but it is a common thread for steam and other, other pieces of equipment, other than furniture as well. So it's not a loan to lockers, but it is definitely one of the bigger impacts. So I think we 
could, you know, look at obviously when we paid them, we could look at canceling the order altogether. But I don't know if that's going to get you any better at this point because of material price increases we've seen across the board. I know um, talking about a pre-construction team that we order steel bar joists right now, they're out until after April of next year. So steel is definitely an issue industry wide. So that's not what you wanted to hear. I know. Not what I want. Uh, some of the other ones, marker boards are looking to be middle of August for delivery now. Those are supposed to be like today, this week, or anything that's been pushed out. Um, the electrical gear, we worked to route it around the Cameron. Um, so that original design that got pushed through, apparently um, it was not reviewed by Amron during the design phase, so we submitted our snails through. It took a lot of work with the design engineer, Amron, our contractors to get approval as we got last Friday and so it took four weeks to get approval of that switch gear and uh, now they've got us a date today of August 30th we got electric switch um, and that's the piece that when it gets installed right. power gets turned on right and that's the ship date and we get it here on the first part of September and then flooring right now was supposed to be here at the beginning of this month and got held up in port and now they confirm delivery is the 26th of July before floor covering is the same. So you notice a lot of the pictures don't have floor covering. When I say floor covering, I mean vinyl. We have carpet, we have everything else, but the majority of buildings really vinyl floor covering. And so the first pal pallets of that that will hit the job site are scheduled July 26th. So that's kind of a big one. So um, as you can imagine, the biggest one for us is the electrical switch. Okay. So we, um so the shipping involved, will they will they let us know when that switch comes off the line and where is that being where is that built where's it going to come from so it's coming from oregon and we have um, looked and procured options for a two-day direct transit which is a team driver so it never stops and that's the fastest we can get here from oregon so direct ship is four days if you have your own dedicated truck with one driver Truck with two drivers, we can do team driving where it doesn't stop, it's two day transit. So that's the best we can get with that. Will that facility allow the district to pick it up at, at factory? Oh, we can look at that option if need be. So, I say two days, but you're not guaranteed that that's going to get on a truck as soon as that comes off the line. That's two days from when they decide to load it. So it could sit, produce for a week and never get on a truck. Yeah, I feel pretty The way this, it could not get here in the middle of September. Yeah, I feel confident from talking to Amber as soon as it's, um, because that, that direct shipment price with all that stuff is a separate company doing only a dedicated one for that. As long as that truck is available, I feel pretty confident to load it right away and start working with it to you know, understand what that looks like. So, um, Yeah, so yeah, so flooring is one of those labor <coughs> topics. So we have a lot of square footage of flooring. But right now the flooring contractor is you know, they plan on sort of laying flooring a month ago. That's uh, what they will happen. They're doing everything they can prep work now to get ahead. Um, but they have two a crew for flooring laying contractors, two two people. They have two crews that, that are available and on site right now doing all the work they can. But they've been reaching out to all the labor unions around trying to find more trade workers and they're very hard to come by. So they're going to continue to work and you know look for other skilled craftsmen to be able to lay flooring. That is also a, a challenge and a hurdle we have but I'm sure a lot of the labor halls are pretty or close to empty right now and uh, to try to find a uh, program on that problem. So that is another one. Um, they've committed to working overtime but only overtime only gets you so far so without the customers groups. Uh, so kind of based on that, with really looking at the, the constraints with you know power, it's probably our main ones because the lock marker boards, lockers, and flooring, we can work contingency plans internally of how to do that second shift or without students there. And working with and the school district, we've done occupied schools and work with the spaces that we have to. But electrical is obviously one we can't. And so right now, I would say based on the dates we have, we're looking at like uh, students in the building nine. So that's kind of what that's looking like. And again, as we know more and we get, we're hoping that date improves, I feel like that's 
based on the information of the kind of a worst case scenario. Right. So for everybody's benefit, so if that were to play out, that would mean that the first two days, or I'm sorry, we start with teachers on the first of September. So the second, third, or Thursday and Friday. So it'd be those two days and the next complete week, like Monday through Friday. So it'd be seven academic days. Monday's up. Or Monday we're off, sorry. So it's six academic days, thank you. It's six academic days uh, that our students would have to be either in makeshift classrooms somewhere, but we don't, we'd have to find 48 classrooms um, or uh, online in a remote setting, which we don't like. Um, so we're trying to do everything we can to push that data from August 30th to we had to do a couple days, you know, that's not ideal, but that's tolerable. Um, but we'd like to do everything we can to try to avoid that. So um, the, the other thing is we have to work with the RV to see if that's even an option. See if we can have that many remote days at the beginning. The state board has said, and rightfully so, they really want everybody back in school. This is obviously a little different than COVID. Um, so we've got to look at some exceptions there. And uh, you know, right now, everything being in flux, we ask Lee to give us the worst case scenario. This is the worst case scenario. Um, so I mean, as, as bad as it is, at least to, if, if it comes to pass that that's what it is, it's bad, but it's not October. Um, so you know, we're, we're, we're going to do everything we can to speed that up, um, but we're going to start building contingency plans that we can hopefully get approved through the ROE to, to have some alternate site or uh, alternating days, or you know, we've got to come up with some other plans now that we're doing the data. Lee, question on cat generator. Um, I would just hate for it to start another year and not use that server. Um, so I'm assuming that the rest of the district will be in the classroom and the high schools that want to flux. Have you checked in to the cost and the ability to have a generator to? not only have the server in that part, but the pool, so that we can keep the pool circulating and, and the uh, necessities of what that's, because there's some more money or contingency that you're gonna to come to us with. And, yeah. uh, great question. Um, so yes, we have looked into that um, right now for the, the server, so that, that's what we did in phase one. We actually have a generator hookup built into that system. Um, so that's up in there, so if you bring the generator the fuel, uh, we have looked into that. The question is now figuring out now that we know the date to go back and make sure it's sized. I think we, the first one we priced up, which was quite a bit of money, was sized to run everything. If we decide based on the dates that we don't need all the county ovens and we're only pop, you know, powering the coolers, we may be able to reduce that cost because we can move down the generator size so we can barrel that in. Um, but we have looked at that availability and we're looking to start getting that line up and secure it right now. Um, regarding white call, uh, talk to the con contractor in Amherst today. I think with the way that building's fed, we can do that a lot of that shutdown ahead of time before the main shutdown and may not be a lot to shut down and not as long. And so if it's only two or three, four days, we may I think we're looking at not using a generator because it's not gonna be a two week shutdown anymore to try to save the district money now. I think we're gonna have as much negative consequences for having power outage for a couple of days in that in that space. Um, and if we need to like get a dehumidifier off of a small 110 generator, we can put a few of those in there just really about controlling humidity versus recirculating pool. So we're looking at those options of doing smaller generators for uh, white wall if it's to do a large generator back to that beauty equipment it's going to be costly and kind of hard. Um, so we're repeating and repeating at the same time, but we are looking at those options. So yes. Any, I won't hold you to it, but any ballpark on what that big generator is going to cost to run the survey? I want to say it was about ten thousand dollars for the rental. Maybe that fuel cost on top of that. Okay. So, farmer in me says go bigger is better. I would not go down in size on a generator. Right. I would go up because there's going to be a skeleton in there that you don't know that you got to run. So you know, we're, on, we're into this thing over our head. Right. So I need to uh, 
get the big one. And I would say based on the timing now, looking at the timings that happen when the elementary are in school, I would tend to agree with that. Originally, our hope was that it was happening before whole food search production was happening. We could scale back to just the coolers, but there will be some prep work and production to work for those elementary because if we go small and Mr. Davis tries to fire an oven and we blow up, we trip it, yeah. I would be a mad <laughs> individual. So right. let's not short that. So I think the biggest thing we can look at now is trying to minimize that shutdown time to help with the uh, both generator and also fuel consumption. So don't we need that in line for generator and the building? Yeah, well, we've had initial conversations with the time but we didn't have a date until the building. So now uh, that we have the deep, we can start actually getting something that's ready. Okay, I guess can we guarantee that White Hall won't be shut down two days? I'd probably go out for it. But you know, an hour from now, we're going to have to go back to see what that duration is before we actually go off line. Well, that size, that circulation. We'll definitely look into that and see what we need to do there. So. The fuel cost, so also in that, I would uh, talk to our local distributors, tell them how much is enough, 10,000 gallon fuel. Right. That's a couple of steam tankers. Mm -hmm. I would think they'd give us a double thousand. Right. right. Volume discount. Well, definitely not good news, but uh, thank you for uh, taking the time and uh, providing this. So you surely got a good, so there's always a silver lining. What's the silver lining? <laughs> I don't remember if this is from last time. So one of the big issues we did have was doors. Right? I don't know if you remember hearing about that. So they were right, the first loads are arriving this week. So we're going to have all the doors going. Which one thing you can't do is occupy a classroom with doors. You can manage without lockers. But from doors, lockers, so that was a big hurdle. I'm not sure they're just active for the closest. So, yeah, we're going to see. Yeah, so yeah, we are not going to allow students in the building with those big holes in the wall. So, we talked to the contractor that uh, lock contractor that we put in temporary plastic with lath and screwed to the walls to close up all those openings that would be easily removable at night for them to pop them off and put lockers in. So, yes, we've thought about that. Yeah, I would agree. I'm not comfortable having big holes in the wall where someone can be pushed into or tripped or whatever the case may be. There's sharp things back there. So, that we are, that we are not allowed, yes. What about the front windows? When you go down to Fremont, I've had to look at plastic for a month. So they are there on site today. They started trying to install them, and then the rain picked up, so they closed it back off. So you will see windows going them off. So I see. I think the weather, weather I looked at for tomorrow, and I think maybe Wednesday looks good. So um, yeah, so they are on site now. So that's the weather dependent things that just you know happened that today. Instead. Thank you. Uh, moving on, next uh, agenda item is a COVID response and ISPE requirements discussion. Thank you. Uh, so, as you heard, uh, Andy presents some information for you today. We did get guidance last Friday, which has become State Board Education's way of doing things, dumping things on Friday at like 4 o'clock. Um, and then they provided a clarification that really wasn't a clarification. It was just a repeat of what they said before. Um, uh, that echo uh, built onto CDC's guidance. Um, so as of right now, um, from everything is you know, basically it's up to local discretion in terms of what we plan to do. So. Uh, what I would tell you right now is the, um, if I know anything, it's that the, the ISBE and the IDPH uh, will likely modify, adjust, change their recommendation at some point between now and, and uh, start of school. So we do have the benefit of a little bit of time. Um, and so what I would recommend right now is to just sit tight, don't make any lasting 
definitive uh, vote just because if some if the state comes out and changes what they're gonna do, then we gotta go back and change and then we're backtracking what we communicated to the parents. So I think it's important that we um, communicate something that we know we can stick to. Um, and so it's certainly within the realm of possibility that it stays the way it is, and then you know we uh, would have the option of making it mask optional or whatever it is we want to do. We just have to make sure that uh, uh, it's something that we can live with, something that we can enforce, something that we can support, um, and you know, we'll, we'll have a couple of meetings between uh, now and start school between the board retreat and, and uh, our next regular meeting. So. We are meeting, we meeting superintendents in this region, are meeting with uh, together and with the health departments to try to make sure we're all doing the same thing uh, as much as possible because we don't want you know, people saying, well, I'm gonna go to that school, or I'm gonna go to this school, I'm gonna move, or do that. We, we think consistency for people would be a lot of things to do. So, um, you know, at this point in time, I think it would be wise just to uh, sit and, and wait for a little while and see where the wind blows with CBC and IEPH before we make any last vote. Wasn't most of that regarding students, the information that she sent out? Most of what? The, the, the letter from <coughs> the state superintendent. So the state superintendent said, that the CDC has said that local authorities have the right uh, and would encourage them to work with the local health departments to make sure that they're doing something that can be supported. Um, so what the CDC and IDPH recommend in that, in that guidance document is that you, if you are gonna remove mitigation, that you do those removals one step at a time. So whether that be changing your uh, distancing from six feet to three feet, plexiglass dividers, face protection, whatever that is, that you uh, only don't do something whole cloth, look at things in pieces. Um, so we have the benefit of starting last uh, from all the area schools. So since we don't start until September, um, I believe that, that right now to sit and uh, consider after speaking. If the guy changes it, they say this is definitely enforced for six months. Well, then you know we can make a different decision. We can make a good decision. <laughs> so right now, it's just because the thing happened on Friday. Uh, I think it would be wise to give it a little bit of time and make sure that we can have a comprehensive plan. And then we feel good that we know we can count on the guy. Thank you. Seeing no other questions, we'll be moving on to item C. Uh, it is change order for consider approval of a junior senior high RFP 037 circulation test. Yeah. So So uh, this change order request uh, is uh, was brought out for the Pricing up what this proposal for uh, circulation desk in the media center. Um, so there's two desks there. There's one, I believe, usage wise is for the library, one is for CSS. 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 Sorry. Um, um, so uh, there are those two areas. So original bid documents did not show the desk in there. I think there was still up in the air at the side at the time of the new furniture were built in. Um, they had us price up some built in options. So me, but at least the package, I would say the material is forty thousand dollars and some change, and as a you know, forty five hundred for install. Um, so that's what we're looking at for today. And it was a note that the um, funding for this is coming out of a different budget. And I think that if you have questions on that, you can use the same to speak to what part of the city we're talking about. Um, the city 
so these are two different, they're called circulation desks, but it's not a traditional circulation desk for CSI. This will be where the drop off is for any student or staff member who needs tech fixed in the new building. So that's because that's what CSI class will be on that half of the classroom. So we're taking 50% off um, of this charge from Reiner funds because CSI is part of the business department. We're taking 50% out of RLIS, which is Rural Low Income Schools grant that we get each year. Um, and then we also have a $1,000 honorarium to apply to the library side of this for Mary Petrie, who was a long time um, employee of the district who worked in the library I think for 28 or 29 years. She sadly passed away this year, and the family um, gave a $1,000 donation in her honor, and we'll be putting a plaque on the circulation desk in her honor. So it's a nice tradition with the Petrie family as well. Will we be getting a circulation desk on time? <laughs> well, that Mary J won't be ready for a while. Right. Right. Yeah, so once we get approval on this, we'll go through this shot, right? <laughs> I would say you're looking at the area J, I think we're targeting the Christmas time frame to be turned over. Yeah, not sooner. Should be a few months. Is that email out of pocket? Right. You're in trouble. Yeah. 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 No, uh, Leggett designed it. So, Philip Bell works on the overall design of the campus space. That's good. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. You've got to raise questions. I know. Next time. Next time I will. Allison? Oops. Aye. Whatever you Aye. Shorty? Aye. Dustin? Aye. Dustin? Aye. 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 And next on the agenda, we're going to discuss the junior, senior, or high class. With your permission, I would like to just push this off another month. We're essentially what we're doing, we just don't have a pocket yet. So uh, this would be the same plaque as the ones at King and Lombard and Seal, but we would add two names to it. So just, if we get this done in a timely manner, I believe these would be the last names that are added, but so we're going to give. But if you look at the ones at the other, it's just too much. So why are we moving it to another meeting? Well, it's just to show you what it looked like. Is all it was the discussion. So we'll show you. I mean, I can see so pictures. Yeah. It looks like the others. I don't. It's in the agenda. Need, uh, we'll show you. Pick up. <laughs> Essentially, it'll be on one of the pictures that we have. It's okay. not like an approval. Who's the teller? So that's okay. what helps, right? Yeah, I think we brought it to the attention to make sure we knew what names could be on it. Right. So that was a more or less a question about the concept. Yeah. 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 This is just a heads up. It really isn't for discussion. Yeah. It's just like, hey, we're going to Okay. Well, thank you. Let's see. Move on to focus area three, responding to the changing needs of our community. Um, first on the agenda is to considering approval of the district photography bid. Um, we got all the information from Mrs. Ham, and I appreciate all the work and everything she's done for that. But I'm going to take that item and move on to agenda item B. Uh, consider approval of the milk bid. We have a motion to. So okay. Sorry, second. I guess it'll be Miss Ann with you. Well, actually, I'm going to have Mr. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, just about milk and bread. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. I'm, I apologize. I'm a little bit unprepared coming up here. So, oh, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to tell you. Do you have any numbers? We have any numbers. Yeah, that's absolutely I was just holding them for you. Thank you. Okay, we had, we sent out for milk and bread bids. The milk bid came back from Prairie Farms and from Einert. 
Um, as you can see, <coughs> Prairie Farms was the lowest bid, uh, a little bit of an increase, 2.33%, uh, uh, but quite a bit of a uh, price difference in the market. Uh, do you guys have that information in front of you? Okay, thank you. Um, then, for the bread bid, there was quite a bit of a difference too. That's the second we'll get to that. Right. We got a vote. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. First. Yeah. The price went up a little bit, but not a lot. It's the same battery I had before. Okay. So, if I can say that, I was very pleased with the milk bids, especially after some information that Mr. Davis shared with me earlier um, this week. So, U.S. Foods, who's one of the largest food distribution companies in the United States, canceled all of their K-12 contracts in the past week. Um, because of uh, potential unexpected food shortages and inability to meet the orders. And so thankfully we work with Poles and we're part of co-op and Mr. Davis and his group do a great job of uh, procuring and securing our orders. Um, but considering everyone has seen the price of the food at the grocery store go up exponentially in the last few months and we're expecting to see that, that these milk beds, even though we saw a little increase, um, very pleased that it was as small as it was. Okay. Yeah. If you think that Kohl's is immune from this, I think they're going to get From the shortages. Like Kohl's shortages. Oh. The okay. little guys are going to get hit worse than the larger suppliers. Oh, possibly. absolutely. And in fact, um, we've already spoken to Mrs. Pickerel. Um, we're going to be sending out some information um, to remind parents where to access our menus and to tell parents that we may have unexpected changes in our menu due to delays in food products. So we're gonna let everybody know that it may say it's Taco Tuesday, but if the cold truck doesn't come in on Monday afternoon with what we need. It's a turkey surprise. It could be. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so no, we fully expect that and we're going to prepare our families for those changes in the menus. One thing we've got to remember, milk comes from a cow and a cow produces every day. So milk, unless there's a delivery shortage, milk should not be an issue. Well, and I was gonna say milk uh, has only been a shortage because of transportation we've had farmers pouring it out from the ground because they can't get the trucks. But yeah, so it should just be a distribution problem if there is a problem. And I'm sure a distribution problem plays into US foods problem as well as you know, you know, centralized warehouse, you're sourcing out the nine school districts. Yeah, four drivers. Uh, and I have been in contact with Coles. I'll be placing actually be placing Coles orders for about the first two weeks of school by the end of this week. So hopefully make sure we're secure for yeah. the start. Then that's why we need the generator lead because he's planning ahead. I don't want him to say, oh, that two weeks was for it. Okay, well, the juice. Yeah, the juice. Well, literally. Just for information concerning milk beds, I was curious, so I looked at the milk beds for the last three years, and they consistently go up. Last year it was like over a 10% increase, you know, and the year before that it wasn't quite 10%. I don't remember what it was, but it was like a 3% or something. So. I noticed that the milk bids consistently go up, but the bread bids. I will tell you though, so this is my 20th year of doing milk and bread bids. So I can tell you that there is definitely a rise in falls. There are times where milk bids go down and bread bids have gone down. So it's just right now we have to be in that cycle where the milk bids are going up and the bread bids are staying flat, but I've seen it in the opposite direction. About eight years ago, there were downstate schools that didn't have a source for bread there were some Chicago area um, companies that closed down and there wasn't a distribution network for other companies like Bimbo and Aunt Billy's to um, basically distribute to smaller school districts. And the school district that I was in, we actually were going to Walmart every day to purchase bread because we did not have a contract anymore to bid those services. So we're fortunate that we actually do have milk and bread bids in this area. And Matt's not going and loading up his Prius every day to drive at Walmart. So, is that a sale? Okay, uh, no further comments.
I'm going to say. Would you vote? Shorty? Aye. Best Tab? Aye. Fetcher? Aye. Cervantes? Aye. Lyon? No. Phelps? Aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Okay. Look, 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 is there such a thing as a multi-year commitment? The reason I say that, wheat is in a global shortage now, and I can see bread and things, to your point, going up. Will they, um, will they commit to us on a multi-year situation? Um, that I don't know, but that I can find out. Because that, that, will, that one will come to, back to haunt us. I, I, yeah, I doubt that they probably get any ready to You know, with milk bids, there's almost always an escalator. Uh, I don't know why that doesn't want to get included in bread bids, but with milk, you can have that. Or if the costs go up there, you know, they have the right to change the price. But that's yeah, poor business. Um, they're in business with the locker people. But uh, uh, yeah, the, you, you're exactly right. And that's why I say so there, are, there have been times where we've seen bread bids go crazy and milk bids go the other way. So, well, I was just but fortunately, our reimbursement from the federal government goes up each year. So a little bit of increase that we do see that's covered by our increase in our reimbursement. But yeah, I think that we are more concerned with the supply this year if we have some mm -hmm. occupied by the federal government this year because that's probably going to be a bit out of the way for those short schedules. How's it? Yes, Yes. Aye. 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 Next item is consider approval of the custodial book. Who pictures this stuff? <laughs> Need a motion? So moved. Second. I was hoping we'd get the uh, whole lot of for that. Who knows about this? Uh, I, so, uh, Mr. Spring is not, was not able to be here tonight, so he's the one. Um, who has been working through both and paper for the last couple months. Um, but I was um, at King the day that both and paper came down with all of these items, and we had a group of custodians over there, and it was the greatest thing in the world to see. So you had probably six or seven custodians standing around watching Andy, our custodian at King, on the right floor cleaner, <laughs> in the sharpest, you know, cleanest corners you could imagine. And it was like he was driving a Maserati. Like there was, it was the greatest thing. So it was unbelievable how quick and how efficient uh, these writing uh, floor machines were. We're actually going to be uh, looking at our job descriptions, particularly at the high school, once it's finished, to create some efficiencies uh, with how we currently clean at night in our big crews. Uh, the other things we were having difficulty with are. Um, Epoxy floors in the kitchens, they were really hard to get clean. And Wilson Paper said we have a scrubbing solution with that and brought a scrubber, and it was amazing. Like the shine just came back up, they were clean, they were the wonderful. Like so, yeah, it was, yeah. And then the, I did not see the window cleaning machine, but if anyone has driven by GHS, you can see that our front windows, the ones that are still there, are incredibly dusty and they're difficult to get to. Um, so this has an extension and will allow us to clean windows frequently and efficiently and safely. Um, so it's very exciting. I will say that our custodians are incredibly hard workers and they have not been given a lot of new equipment probably in the last 20 years to be quite honest. And so this is much needed, much deserved. It will help make them more efficient and they're very appreciative of it. Well, so, I a little bit longer story. I want to make sure we cover all the bases. So, uh, four years ago, when we started the discussions about uh, building cleanliness and what buildings were going to remain, um, we entered into discussions with Mark Reed, still the uh, director of maintenance, that we needed better equipment. changeover in our custodians and, and we do have wonderful custodians that work very hard 
So we, we actually wanted to do this a few years ago, but we thought this would be a little wasteful uh, because we were going to add some equipment that we didn't necessarily need. Um, so we're a couple years past what we really wanted to do this, but we feel like now that we know what building we're in and everything's uh, pretty solidified there, that now it's an appropriate time to, to invest in this equipment because we really do have a lot of outdated stuff in this equipment. So I'm sorry. I oh, no, not at all. I'm just curious, these machines are larger. Where do they store in these buildings? They can fit in the boiler rooms. So if you think about like in Cain, when you took out the big boiler, you have more storage room. So the machines aren't very large. I mean, I think it's enough for a man to sit on. It's about the same size as really the push behind, just a little bit longer. Um, if you imagine the push behind. Right, so, okay. So, no, we shouldn't have a storage problem at all. Question I have, since we're doing this, is six enough of the riders? For right now, we may be coming to you to add more, especially when we add A and B, sections A and B in high school, which is the new addition and the 1012. We may need additional ones, but for right now, this is what we need to get our year started um, for all of the buildings. So will the price, so once again, is now the time to buy them? I can check with Jason on availability. They've been holding these machines for us since the beginning of June. So just because of our board cycle, we couldn't get on the June agenda. And I said, well, for this amount of money, we can't commit to it without the board approving it. Sure. So it's really rare that they actually have the equipment on hand. I can check and see if there's any additional ones that we can get. And I can bring that back in August. Yeah. I'm very glad you buy it for a long time. Thank you. Any more questions? Allison? Patrick? Hi. Mr. Marcus? Hi. Gwen? Yes. Phelps? Hi. Marias? Hi. Tricky? Hi. Best Hub? Hi. And next on the agenda is personnel. And the first on that is consider approval of the personnel. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I need more. Any comments, questions? We have a full position. This is great. Yep. We're nice place to work. We have a full math department now at the high school. That's great news. Allison? Tremendous. Hi, Glenn. Yes. Phelps? Yes. Curious? Hi, Tricky? Hi. Best Cat? Hi, Fletcher? Hi. Next, uh, consider approval of the exempt stamped handbook. Any questions or comments? I just had two. My suggestions are, made, and I shared this with Dr. Askin, but not before he gave us the updated. There is, I can't remember what, what section it is, the number of days for resignation. Was right. that? We have to put the number 14 in. And then my only other suggestion is to. Um, gender neutralize all of the language. So either do a he, she, they, or there, or just the use an employee throughout. I have those changes and we'll make those tomorrow. Okay, so we'll just make those changes. Uh, uh, Allison? Glenn? Uh, yes. Phelps? Yes. Larry? Yes. Aye. Sherry? Aye. Best Chad? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. Cervantes? Aye. Okay. Next, uh, deserve approval of the custodial maintenance and roll Any motion? Roll move. <laughs> Second. Tiona. Okay. Uh, so we met, Jen and I met with the uh, custodial union uh, June the 14th. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, we had some, we settled the contract but there were some clarification lingering issues in there regarding vacation primarily that we needed to fix. Um, neither side was wrong, but it was just an interpretation. Uh, but it was really kind of creating some persistent problems in the summer uh, with how we use vacation and how we make sure that we have enough people there. Uh, and then secondly, we were having difficulty finding people uh, at our starting pay. Um, and so we were trying to some pay rates in there that were commensurate to what we did with other like positions in the other unions that we just negotiated with before. Um, so we provided some pay increases in an attempt to get more people, which we can 
say we've got quite a few more applicants for our custodial positions than we just posted, so that's positive. Um, because we really had a, a difficulty not just finding custodians, but custodial um, substitutes. So we feel really good about that. Uh, so uh, there are some pay increases, but also some, some gives on also sunsetting who gets um, longevity pay. Fixing some vacation issues in her, in her system. They have included in your uh, seats on the insurance committee. How many did they have previously? They have one. Oh, so it's, that's good. It's one of three. Well, uh, the other, yeah, an important part in there is some protective language for people to make a certain threshold so that their uh, health insurance can be protected so that they're not being priced out of having we feel like that's a good start to try to go into the other unions as well because we feel like that's something that's going to be really important in the future as we try to look at what our insurance rates are, um, knowing that unless something changes, the insurance costs are going to continue to go up and we can find a menu of options for people uh, at different price points to try to ensure that they're affordable. Well, you guys have a question? Yeah, I'm going to ask you yeah. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay, next, uh, grievance, grievance update. <laughs> we still have one outstanding grievance with the, the GEA um, regarding approval of graduate uh, courses. So, uh, the, basically, the nexus of that grievance is some contract language that, that says how and when we must approve. Graduate courses. There's a disagreement right now regarding who issues the graduate credit. So, uh, if, a, if a school, our position is that the school doesn't really offer that class, and it's really just something that there, there's another division of their school that provides a credit for that. It's really not their school. It's more like a money grab kind of thing from from some universities. But we don't feel that those positions, those classes, should be counted the same as typical uh, graduate courses from accredited. So we're really trying to make a tighter look at what is actually grad credit versus what's not. Uh, because some things should really, in our view, be seen more as professional development than what So it's really trying to refine that grievance. So uh, the GEA position is that we should continue with what, with just allowing it as long as it came from that college, it should be allowed. Uh, our position is well, really, what does come from that college? If it's not offered at that college, it doesn't really come from that college. So, that's the So it's ongoing. We've been having very individual conversations, but we're just trying to get to the heart of the issue. Any questions? I'll move on to a report on FOIA requests. First time I'm on. Excellent. Uh, let's see, then. We're almost to the end of the meeting. Uh, comments by Board of Education. Um, start on my left. Anybody down? Discussion? Okay. Good? Yeah. Okay. Body. Um, some comments on the building. Um, I know things are things are not going as we had wanted, but um, it's still in the end is gonna be the right thing. So even though I'm, I'm a little uh, put out on some of the things that are going on, it's the world we're living in right now. And I guess I don't have to like it, but I gotta live it. Um, and then um, kudos to all the staff again um, for where we're, where we're sitting today. Um, very, a very good spot. Um, also, um, special ed, I think we're close to being fully staffed. Our, math department fully staffed. Um, also, um, you know, um, GHS North, I always questioned what was going to happen, and we have a plan going forward for that, and that's a good move. Um, I appreciate that. Um, so everybody out in listener land, uh, stick with us. Um, we're, we're doing all we can to get do the right thing and get everybody back in these schools and, and moving forward. So. Um, for the paper and the radio, we're on the right track. So 
it'd be nice to see a positive headline on the paper one of these days. Thank you. Never <laughs> mind. We began this meeting today with a presentation about uh, what we're going to do about going back to school in terms of the uh, virus, which has taken over 603,000 people in this country. I think we need to be careful we don't forget that number because it has been a serious activity. I was on the radio today, I heard that Knox County is the highest of all the Western Illinois counties in terms of our immunization rate. 44%. I mean, 56% of our population is not immunized. And I, if we want to reopen for everyone, we need to get more people protected because we're going to see spikes and it's not going to be nice. And I'm worried. Uh, and I, uh, you're supposed to talk to your doctor and listen to what your doctor says. And imagine most people's doctors will recommend it. So, I, as I, if the community ever does look at this, there's one more person who's recommending if you're not immunized and you're eligible, please do so for the sake of everyone else in the community. Uh, it's, okay, the other item though is solar. I'd like an update sometime on the solar field behind Lincoln School and Willard. Why don't we have, huh? One that has to be built yet. And yeah, we need no, to. Yeah, we that much. It would be great. Can't have an excuse for the weather this time. Uh, when they sold this, this project, I really wanted to. You know, this shouldn't happen during the school year. It should happen when we're at recess and construction crews can come in here. But just so, there Cyrus. Right, in the parking lot there. Right, and we need to get these things done. Because once again, we're a forward-looking school district, and this is just part of that, that people appreciate that. Thank you. We're all the way down, on the right. Over this day. So, um, I think like the oh. information of the setback of school starting wasn't uh, ideal, but I have to say, I was really excited to see the pictures tonight um, because I got a chance to go in um, just like a week ago, and there was quite a few updates from then. Right. You know, the uh, yeah. carpet, um, the walls down old GBC. So, you know, I was pretty excited to see that. So that was the silver lining. I was mentioning that as we were looking at that. So pretty excited about what that, that's going to turn into. Um, as far as masks are concerned, you know, the goal is to make sure everyone's safe and continues to be safe. So whatever that looks like as we make those decisions going forward, um, that goal is just ensuring the safety for everyone going forward. So that's all I have. <clears throat> um, so I agree that we have to wait with the COVID discussion because there are updates coming out daily. But you know, as Member Lyon said, Knox County, I don't know what Gillsburg's numbers are, but Knox County is only at um, 44%. And that's actually um, rounding up because it's at like 43 point something. Um, and we can only be as safe as, right? This is, this is one of those cases where individualism and the, the ability to make my own decision for my own self um, is actually kind of superseded by community. And because we are responsible for an entire community of schools, um, it, it's not just one person that you're impacting uh, when you may end up uh, with this illness and in a building in a classroom. And I would say that uh, as adults, we are in a lot of control of what the situation looks like. We as parents, and I include myself in that conversation because I am one, I get to choose how I talk about this situation to my students, my child. I get to set that tone. I get to um, talk to them about what that looks like. And there were a lot of numbers thrown at us and mental health 
challenges for our children are on the rise for a lot of reasons, not just COVID. Uh, social media um, is a big impact. So um, in addition to monitoring whether or not your child wants to wear a mask or you think a mask is appropriate in school, double check social media, double check the kinds of um, interactions that they're having and the kinds of conversations you're having with them in, in other areas that also contribute to mental health challenges um, for our children. And then use the resources, right? Our community has been unfortunately affected by a lot of uh, reductions in government aid, you know, funding for mental health services um, from the federal government, from the state government. So mental health services are needed. And this district actually has done a lot in the past four or five years to try and provide those services within our schools because our community cannot, um, does not have the resources in the same way that they used to. Um, and so I encourage those parents that feel like their children are um, having some particular issues to reach out to your administrators and ask how to um, make use of those resources that we have provided in the schools. Um, the other thing that I will say, um, I know that it's way ahead of time, like it's months, but District 205 is hosting the October Western Illinois Division Board meeting. It is um, scheduled at this point tentatively, I believe, for October 26th. So, so please, um, board members, um, make sure that you mark that down. Right. I think that is the one that we said, but that if the high school is ready, we would be willing to move it over there. So, I'm looking at the October 26th. And I have down that the meeting starts at five, but I could have just put that so that I'm not stuck at work and that I'm at the <laughs> meeting at time. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll put out updates. Yeah, I think we did spend a long Okay. Yeah. Your office. Oh, yes. And I am currently the chair of the Western Illinois Division. So, you know, please help me <laughs> look good by attending the please meeting. Come. Um, and then the, I, the last thing I'll say is actually a future agenda item, but if I don't say it now, I'm going to forget. Could we add um, future use of uh, buildings that are no longer inhabited to our next agenda? I know the buildings and grounds going to talk about that, but just to kind of put it on the radar for the community to know that we are looking at those things. Building and grounds report and then a discussion. And you know, just to know for the community that buildings and grounds is looking at that and we can have an update if there's one possible at the next meeting. That's the answer. Other records? A lot. Okay. That's quick. And I don't have any comments either. Well, I guess I'll let number phones. Yeah. I'm taking it. Um, at the last meeting, we had a citizen speak of the grass and the situation at the solar field behind Gamble. So, so the next morning, I drove out there. Um, his points are well taken. Uh, it might have been exaggerated a little bit, but I would like to know um, who is it. The people that are supposed to mow under there. We need to keep that. And then um, there is some grass taller than that fence. So um, point taken, um, you know, that, that's the thing I, I, I take pride in that. And I know we're under construction a lot of places, but when you have a citizen come to us like that, I think we need that. And I know our custodian, all our people are, I know they got a lot going on, but the weed eater for an hour out there would make us look better and then we need to get on the solar people to say hey that's your that's your responsibility and, and it is the solar people's responsibility and, um, you know, i've been out there at least five times since then uh to spot check it and, and it's better um but i agree that just be able to be it's we aren't even just so people understand we're not even allowed to so it's the solar people's responsibility it's their responsibility 
So I've already said no to solar folks asking them to come to August, and that's going to be part of the business. Moving on, do we have any additional future agenda items? Yes. <laughs> Can we get an update on the registration numbers for next year? And while I ask for that update, I will also remind everybody in the community, and here's something that was really great news that could be printed, because I think our community, uh, for some reason, doesn't still get this. <laughs> we are zero feet. It costs zero. What about the school supplies? Zero. Because we provide school supplies. What if I want to play sports? Zero. Zero sports? No. 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 <laughs> Somebody will say that we have zero sports. I'm just making sure. <laughs> there are no activity fees. There are no school supply fees because we provide them. You don't get, you'll go to the Walmart, you'll go to Target, you'll go to whatever store is in the community and they're gonna have school supply lists and you're not gonna see one for District 205. That's not because teachers didn't submit them, it's because we provide them. We, the district, you don't have to do it. And when you go to register your student, you don't have to pay for anything unless your student's taking driver's ed. Or park a parker car. Or park a car. But that's it. That's all. No other fees. Zero. Ms. Sam, did we raise the tax rate to do this? We did not raise the tax rate. No, we did not. And we are the only school district that I can find anywhere in Illinois. And if there's other ones, please join the club. They should also get some accolades. But that is zero fees to register, to attend. That we're providing all school supplies for students. Um, they're able to participate in sports for free. Then surely our fund balances went down. No, they did not. Oh, no way. In fact, we have $1.2 million more dollars in our operating funds this year than we did last year. So our fund balances went up. Our tax rate did not go up. We don't charge fees. And it just it takes you about five minutes to register. And we're providing more social emotional support, better buildings, air conditioning, free computers. And maybe some routers. And these things are funded through um, our federal grants, through ESSER funds, through a variety of different resources. We do have local property taxes that help to fund some of that, but we're making sure that families have zero barriers for being able to bring their kiddos to school. We don't charge for lunches. We are CEP district, so free breakfast, free lunch. It's truly a free district. So free public education. How radical. It is very radical. Thank you, Horsley. Yeah. Are you sure? She has a student about me. Good. Oh yeah, was that a motion? <laughs> oh, almost a uh, future meeting date, August 9th, 7 p.m. That's our regular meeting. You know, we never know we have special meetings. Board retreat would be August 11th. Right. Okay, now motion to adjourn. Yes. Oh, move. Second. 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 Second.